Hi, Bill the Artist here, and today we're back with another how to draw video, a how to draw a portrait, and today it's going to be Professor Dumbledore. Jude Law is Professor Dumbledore in the new Fantastic Beasts movie, but we have, and the reason I'm doing this is because I've done these, so we've got the Grinch, full portrait of the Grinch from the 2008 film when Benedict, Cum Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch is playing the Grinch, and there we have Edna Mode. Now this one is online right now, this one's on in a bit, so in a few weeks time you'll be able to get this. Check out the cards and the description for the links for The Grinch straight away, but please do like and subscribe and you will be notified when Edna Mode is online. Right now we've got uh, The First Incredibles is up and more are being added this week and so we've got a whole set of Incredibles characters coming out uh, for how to draw. But because I use these techniques of using the boxes and the squares, this is how I want to show you doing it for a portrait. But the reason we're doing Dumbledore is because of this. Now this is uh, the portrait that we're going to do today. But this I did on March the 16th, midnight about the kind of witching hour. Uh, it was when the trailer came out for the new second Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald film. And I just did this, this is just in my sketchbook, and I just did this using the techniques that I use for the Grinch and all of these how to draw videos. So I'm going to show you the same techniques but on a full portrait for Jude Law. Now again, these are quick, I'm going to do this. This probably took me about half an hour. This might take about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, because I'm just doing a bigger one and I'm describing it as I go to teach you. But this is a drawing of Ed Sheeran. If you check out the portraits time lapse, the link again is in the cards and in the description. Uh, this is like a day, maybe more than a day's work, again with all the guitar, but it shows what you can do if you spend a lot more time on a portrait. So you can do it very quickly, which I'm going to show you today, or you can spend a lot of time and develop your skills and do full portraits. So this is how you can do portraits of yourself, take selfies and sort that out, or you can do portraits of family and friends or even pets, which is where I describe when we're doing these kind of pictures. So we are going to crack in and get on with drawing Professor Dumbledore. Now, again, this is my trusty 2B pencil, which I do most of the work with. We might end up using 4B. Now, again, this is small. This is just a pencil extender. And when you get down, this is probably getting to the end. So I'll have to then use a full one, which is this, a nice new full pencil. But it just means you get more life out of your pencils. And you can utilise and use it for the drawing. So now I am going to divide the page into quarters because it helps you with your placing and again i show you this in the how to draw videos quite quickly so i'm just dividing my a4 piece of paper into four and now we can start adding professor dumbledore's shapes now again, I'm just putting these little marks down that kind of give you, that's the top of his hat there, and the brim of his hat is kind of above halfway. The shadow part is possibly about pretty much halfway. So you can put these lines down, these little tick marks. The edge of his hat is couple of centimetres about an inch in on that side and the same on this side and this will help you when you come to actually place the big shapes. Now again underneath the bottom of that line there you can see you've got a little triangle here of his cheek going up and his ear is going to come in somewhere around here and the top of his shoulder is I'd say about a third in. And the edge comes out, and it go, this, the curve of his left sleeve goes right to the bottom corner of the paper and comes down. And again, we've got thirds on that side. So now I'm just going to draw in some simple box shapes. And 
here we've got his collar comes pretty much right the way down to just past halfway and so we've got a nice simple triangle there and we can carry that one up to just over and we've got a bit of a rectangle there and the back of his collar goes there now his chin the side of his cheek so we've got his nose the base of his nose is pretty much right on the center line so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put this box in for the top of his hat and that's just past the center line on each side now the top of his hat just comes inside so you can see how that will curve in a second but we just need this simple box again I'm going to put an outside box in and coming over to the top of his eye we've got the outside of the brim of his hat now his ear is inside and that's pretty much on the center so we need a rectangle for the inside of his ear that's the the inside of the dark of the shadow of the brow of his hat and the top of his ear is inside there so we've got a box there for his ear we need bit thinner than that so if we just put that there and I'll just erase that line out and then coming from his collar we have a triangle which is his sideburn and we can do another triangle going up now what we can do is draw an ellipse in which is the outer brim of his hat because that just helps us again just using a simple ellipse shape coming off the top of his ear and we can do where that comes so now what we need is we've got a box shape coming all the way down so there's a line for the side of his head and we need a triangle for his nose so there you've got a nice triangle shape for Professor Dumbledore's nose again his eye coming out here you've got another triangle shape I remember when we did Edna Mode and others you can do his eye shape inside it's like a D on its side that's fallen backwards so there's one shape now we can carry that construction line up because his eyes are kind of level and we can do and there you can see it's like a capital D and we can pop that in now this eyebrow is a bit like a banana so we've got a straight line coming up for the shadow off the top of his nose so there's a box for that shadow I'm going to do a little rectangle there and you've got a bit of a triangle of shadow there that we can fill in where you got to that eyebrow 
and then we've got a little triangle that comes down and forms that eyebrow coming off there. Now again we've got a triangle which forms off the side of his nostril underneath his eye and that point is just past the outside of his eye and that'll be his crease line for the side of his nose down to the corner of his mouth. Now Jude Law's mouth what we need now is a simple rectangle and that's that'll be where his mouth is fully going to go. And so what we can do is put another rectangle on which will be his moustache then here we've got a little box which is where his beard is coming down and that can go a little bit lower and we've got a box for his chin you can imagine the front of his chin comes down underneath there as well and so we've got a little triangle because his nose comes underneath there there's a little triangle there which is the side of his face his right cheek coming out and comes around his nose now we've got all these simple construction lines and that's a very very quick and easy way of bringing about a cubist kind of portrait so you can see all the shapes of the boxes and the rectangles just and the triangles form the shapes that we want now we're just going to check points so the top of his ear needs to be below the top of his eye eyebrow here it's kind of in line with his eyebrow so we know that we can reduce that down then all this is dark here so where his hat comes in we've then got a little box shape the bottom of his ear comes across and it's just above the top where his nostrils going to be I'm just checking the points with the pencil where I want the lines to come. So the edge of his mouth, that's in the right place. We know that that's going to curve around there. And I'm just checking the distance of where that is. So that's, yep, yeah, about third. So we just want the length and the shape to be a little bit correct so I'm happy with that we've got the points in and the places and now we can start detailing up elements of Professor Dumbledore so we've got if we start with this eyebrow and quite a big bushy eyebrow which is a good reference point so you can see that starting I'm just filling in and I'm going in the way that the eyebrow hairs will go just pushing the pencil around very quickly and very simply now again this eye here you can see comes down and you've got the shadow of his eyebrow and we're going to do this quite quickly you know the edge of his nose comes off there and you've got a slight curve coming out coming down to the very tip of his nose now his actual 
very tip of his nose sticks out past his eye line and his cheek so we just want that nice round shape at the end and it curls around and his nostril so if you imagine like a banana shape there you've got the dark of his nostril that starts in line with that just inside the top of his nose where the highlight is and then you just got a little banana shape and then it curves up and the bottom of his nose comes right round underneath now here we have a little triangle of flesh that's going to come up underneath his eye I'm just bringing that down a little bit and the very corner of his eye is right in and it's just outside his nose so if I bring his cheek down inside that construction line and pull out his moustache you've got the shape of his eye taking place so you've got the very inside over the top of his eyeball of his eyelid goes up and then we've got we can just put that curve in there little dot to leave highlight and then you follow that curve again this is all inside that D and I've pulled that line of that D down to kind of match the curve of this top part and that's underneath and then like his eyelashes would be on the outside of this second line then from Above again we have the fold right above his eye and that comes and joins the outside of his eye eyelid and we can bring that down over the top now we can go right out to the point of his eyebrow And we've got where his head goes into his hat you can see that that is halfway from the edge of his eye to the tip there so we've got that line going in now I'm going to draw the curve and it comes to about halfway of his eyebrow now I'm going to follow that round to this side to where the top of his ear is you can see we're just starting to build up the detail of the outline of Professor Dumbledore now again when I did that small drawing I just did that very very quickly putting these principles in place so now I'm going to put in this eye so again we're just looking and I'm going to follow that curve And then his very top line, which is the crease above his eyebrow. Now that is supposed to be about there. So I'm just going to hide that. It's, it's about. Yeah, just about a centimetre above where the top of that eyebrow is. Because kind of, he's obviously raising this eyebrow, his left eyebrow. And then bring that shape down. So I'll just erase that 
little construction mark and then we do the same for the top of his eyelid where his eyelashes are that's coming down to there and then you want a second line inside where it joins onto his eyeball and then his eyeball is licking out right on the corner his eye iris and pupil and the pupil is there right in the center so this is just a simple way of developing the shapes now I'm going to put in quite quickly and the edge of the brow the other shapes of the outside of the hat so I'm going to go and follow the line and I'm not resting my hand on I'm using my shoulder all the way with my elbow to get that nice curve now I'm resting my hand and just curving that round and so we can now pull in Dumbledore's ear so inside this rectangle there you've got the top which matches to that eyebrow and it's like a big capital D but it's slightly pointed Jude Lord's ear's got a nice point there and then we can bring that down and we've got his ear lobe coming round underneath and you've got a little triangle of shadow so again inside now so we've got the crease at the top coming down to show the inside parts of his ear and there you've got another little D shape it's almost like a big capital P that's kind of stretched out a little bit but if you just think of it as a little triangle or a squashed up capital D and you got that shape there and you've got the highlight line going over the top and then we want this crease line following the shape there and that's coming down now what we have I'm just scratching the shape of hair of his beard coming down again following the lines of these shapes that we put in the two triangles and that is going to go all the way down there and this is completely black around the back of his hat again following the shape of his hat we've got this point at the top and at the back of his hat just past his ear we've got this nice little curve and then we can follow the curve over the top and the front is about halfway between there the, the very top and the back the top at the back of his head of his hat so we're going to follow that line out touch on and then we can come down now again you've got his head the, the hat is going to be just outside his headline if it was inside it would look very strange so you just think the hat has got to sit on top of his hair and his head now just to the side we've got the ribbon so you've got a little rectangle there and you can finish that line off and it kind of comes straight and then curves around it follows just at the front mid eyebrow the shape coming round to the front of his hat again you've got a bit of a rugby ball shape here for the crease inside of his hat at the top and that's where we'll put the shadow so it'll be darker at the top and darker here with a lighter part there and a lighter part underneath and we can build that up very quickly in a minute so now I'm just following these box lines and 
for his moustache and we want his mouth coming in the very corner of his mouth is quite dark but that comes out to the front and then his top lip again just a nice very gentle curve that comes down to where the darker part is in the crease of his mouth and his bottom lip again just very slight curve and then you got the top of his beard line coming to the front and now we've got the edge of his beard coming down and you can see that that comes in underneath where the edge of his nostril is and so we've got that shape and then you've got the shadow of his chin line underneath and that's the start of what will become his huge Dumbledore beard and that beard in the Harry Potter movies. But this is the young Dumbledore out in Paris tracking down Grindelwald. I'm just going to darken in that eye. And the same for this one. There's no highlight in his left eye. So you can see now we've got the points starting to look all the actual outline of his face is down and so what we want is the top of his coat his collar of his coat coming down i'm going to follow that line down and then it kind of just slightly kinks up and you've got a little bend and then it bends out and you've got that slight curve underneath now here we want to make sure that we get the top of his shoulder and it's a bit lower than where his chin is because that's the point of where his chin is inside and we've got the top line the top of his coat is in line with where it comes down from where his beard is so I'm just going to curve that down using the, the curve of my wrist so that comes up to his top shoulder and then follow the line down and that comes out here so you've got that line going down and we can just bring the edge of that coat now finally if we bring the edge of his collar and you've got a curve line for that shadow going in and that's about there. In fact, the edge of his hat needs to go in a little bit. And then the back of his shoulder, and then you've got the edge of his collar that comes down. So you've got the top of his shoulder going up. That's halfway on his chin, and that's the back end of his collar with the folds coming down. So that's pretty good. And we're definitely getting the outline down but we're now just going to tighten up a few bits and pieces so what I'm going to do is that the edge of his hat we can just bring in a bit so I can just rub out that and the same with this at the back it should be a little bit over more closer to his ear earlier that that line 
was pushed out a little bit too much. And the same with his eye here. Just <laughs> need to really bring that in. Just tightening those little details up a little bit. That's better. And okay, just kind of that up a little bit. <laughs> now, inside his face, I'm just going to erase down there and inside the hat, the center lines. <laughs> because I don't want those center lines involved in when we're doing the shading in a second. So I'm just going to sharpen my 2B pencil again. Just, and we can start the shading. And we're going to get this in really quickly. So again, what we have now is we've got the bags under Dumbledore's eyes. So just indicating those. But we've got this nice highlight here that halfway from, from the line down from this kind of smile line on his cheek going up. You know there we've got a highlight that comes round. We've got a bit of a highlight there. And we've got these nice little construction lines going on here for us. Now I'm just going to use the side of the pencil and fill in a mid-tone for these shadow shapes. And I'm doing it very quickly underneath the bag of that first eye. And then we've got coming down to his cheek and then the same coming down for the nose. Now I'm going to draw that line just as a guide quickly and then coming down on his cheek got a little sideline. Now the shadow over here comes out from the brow of his hat. And you can press on a bit darker there because that obviously is a darker shadow closer to the top of his head. Then we want underneath that eyebrow Now we can completely fill in his ear and even over where his stubble is all the way down underneath his nose and then very lightly on the side and underneath this eye too and lightly fill in the eyeball because it's not white slightly in shadow as well from up, up part of his eyebrow the very bridge of his eyebrow causing a shadow to fall underneath now here we've got a slightly darker shadow and again the same coming out of his side of his eye around the top and this is where Exactly the same as the Grinch or Edna Mode is when she's online. You'll be filling in these shades using the side of your pencil. Again, this is building up the three dimensional form. And so now we've got his beard coming down. over his mouth. Again I'm going to use the side of the pencil 
to just indicate the corduroy. And this is because you're just making marks. So we've got a nice crease line coming down. And this is drawing it quite quickly. So we've got the fold. That's just sewing the stitch line. We've got the fold coming down. Let's join there. Then we've got another fold inside and the fold underneath. Now we want the shape indicated by the big corduroy lines. Now again when you've got your shading like this you can use a piece of paper to rest your hand on to stop you from smudging it. But I'm just doing this nice and quickly. So again here we've got if you just do little imagine like little birds if you're just going to do a bird like a ding ding like a little V with wings but don't let up and you can indicate all the way up that corduroy and that's deep in shadow going all the way up there again here we've got big thick corduroy lines but we've got a shadow line in the fold there and I'm just going to indicate very quickly up and down and we'll build up on that in a moment and the darker shadow Oh, the dark, the mid-tone grey, sorry, on the back of his jacket. I'm just building this in quickly. Again, I'm just using the side of the 2B pencil as quick as possible. Just to fill in these bulk shapes. Again, inside the shadow of his ear. Now... I'm going to start building the detail up. Now I am going to use a 4B for the real darks. We need to get these shapes blocked in. You can use a 2B completely, but you have to really press on to get a darker tone. And with a 4B or even an 8B, you'll get a darker tone quicker. So again, I'm using the side, this is a 4B pencil because it will just allow me to fill in the shape much quicker. So coming over the top of his ear and you've got that hair coming round. So there, I'm filling in all under the brim of Dumbledore's hat. So that we've got all the shapes in and we can then build up all the shapes filled in with some tone now this is obviously quite a nice dark shadow area and just being a little bit careful where that comes around to the corner of his eye again I'm just tightening that up a little bit finish off filling that shadow in again the top of his hat I'm just holding the paper to stop it from moving even though it's taped down in the corners so we've got the darker shadow create inside where it's just pushed in the shape of his hat and again you've got kind of corduroy type lines on the front we can go right to the edge filling that in right down to the back and 
we go in just over it and you've got darker line over the top of the ribbon pull out the top of the edge again I'm just using kind of half a tone not as dark and I'm now just lightening up and that's the shape of the top of his hat going in now his hair is at the, behind the back of his ear oh, that's Shadow, push that on a little bit too much. See, this is more of a little triangle shape behind his ear. So his hair behind the back of his ear is all in shadow. So I'm really darkening down the hat now underneath the brim. We want to finish that off and you just got a couple of little flicky bits there for his hair out the back and so that shape gives us all the shade and now we want the dark underneath his collar All the way down. Again, it's got these little corduroy shapes. So I'm just using the edge of the pencil to create the shapes all the way across the bottom. Again, you're just having fun making marks, indicating where, using the strength of the darkness of the pencil as you press on and you can just use the edge of the pencil to create that kind of little curved edge that the corduroy creates now that needs to go shadow goes all the way up underneath that crease all the way up to the top And then we've got a dark shadow coming over that shoulder. Underneath the crease of the collar there. And then dark shadow going up towards his ear. Now we can fill in the rest of his collar. Just to build those tones up. I'm just going to sharpen the pencil so I've got a bit more of a side to utilise. So more of that shadow, oh there's a bit plinged off so you can see I'm just creating with big broad marks the shadows and shapes that I want underneath this collar now again we've got the cord right so just indicating the direction of the lines with the side of the pencil and then if we just use a putty rubber quick 
and we can just pull out a little bit and that gives us that little highlight on the top and then you can go back in with the pencil that dark shadow going right to the corner again the same with that neck at the back of his neckline so we're just building up the shadows quite quickly now this is his left sleeve I'm following the direction of the lines now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm just going to use a piece of kitchen roll and I'm going to push the pencil around and that gives me a much more fluid tone now again you can use it even on the face And that gives you again more tone so I'm putting in the shadow in his ear just smoothing that out gently pushing on for that ear down inside his side of his beard his sideburns the side of his nose and if you press on harder you can actually create shadow tones and you can see there it's really starting the form is starting to come together and that's quite black so I'm pressing on lightly and just putting some tone and color on that's the shadow underneath that eyelid again underneath the bottom of the nose slightly darker then you get the crease over the top of the side of his nostril Again, right down the side of his cheek and then you've got the crease lines and he's got two bags under his eyes we can build that detail for the moment and we can bring out the side of his lip darken that eye down again So just sharpen the 4B pencil again, again I'm just bringing that tone right over on the back of his jacket. I need to do the top of the ear, just miss the smudging out on the top of that ear. Now you can use your finger as well, but we'll bring up his detail in a minute. So here we have a much darker fold in the edge of his jacket. And again, the same out the back. And we're just indicating those dark lines. You can see quickly how just using these marks in the direction of the fabric the same with hair and that's how you can generate and create just a quick illusion of the fabric now anyway I'm back with the 2B pencil I'm going to start with his ear in fact I've got a 4B in a pencil extender here I'm just going to use the dark so as it matches around his hair and we can build that up just really bring it 
tight to his ear. And then that is that little bit coming down. And now I'm going to just using simple cross hatching, nice quick fluid lines building up the detail. So there you've got the line coming round, you've got the edge of his earlobe just inside that fold. And that's going up to the top of his line, you've got more of a shadow there. And again the same here. You've got shadow of the side of his cheek right up to his ear coming down and then you've got a darker shadow just over the top. Now I'm just going to pinch the edge of this putty rubber. Before I do that, so this is a smudging tool, again you can use your finger. I'm going to just smudge inside that ear to push the pencil round. And you use this in exactly the same way as you use a pencil as a drawing tool. And you can see that ear's just got a lot more shape and definition very quickly. So now the edge of his ear, I'm just pulling up the highlights. Just to give that a little bit of form. And again, the edge of his ear where it joins his cheek. And then you've got a highlight on the top there, a little fold of skin that's got a highlight inside, and a couple in there. And then really darken that shadow down inside. So now. I'm going to indicate all of his sideburn going down to his beard. Again, I'm just following the shapes. Now, I'm doing these very, very quick lines, but I'm doing them in the direction that his hair would grow. Again, you want a very darker line just over the top of the collar where his beard kind of goes behind the collar because that's more in shadow and again that very quick sketch that I did was about 30 minutes and because I'm just explaining what I'm doing to you guys it looks like this is going to be just over an hour but hopefully it will have been worth it for you. And again, I've just gone a bit too much. So you can just pull out some with an eraser. You can just rub some of the pencil off. Nice and quickly. So again, now what we want is just building up little details. So I'm just putting that nostril in there to help bring some deeper definition and deeper tone. And so that over the top of his nose, coming down to his cheek line. And this is my 2B pencil again. And then what we need is a dark shadow in the corner of his mouth. Going to the top lip all the way around. Again, I'm just filling in that shape. 
top lip comes to there, and his bottom lip has got more of a highlight on as it comes out. And then we can build up his moustache and his beard in a second. So the side is in shade and that, again f draw the kind of moustache lines and you've got, you can see there's a shadow line going right the way across there so it's going to be darker over that part but then light as it comes out to the right side of his face and we can build that up in a moment. Now this to be pencil in this extender is getting a little bit tiny to keep on sharpening so I'm now going to start on a new one and the thing is like I say when you get a pencil and it gets down to that size you can struggle to hold it and that's why having a pencil extender is a real bonus so now I'm just quickly sketching in the direction of Dumbledore's beard going down again just like brushing hair beards and moustaches are the same follow the lines and it'll look more realistic so here there we have that going round. So now what we need is to build up the detail round his eyes. Now normally I will work the eyes and it doesn't matter what order you do it in but I'll work the eyes and you'll see that in my time-lapse videos kind of first and there's no rules or reason why you do whichever bits you want to. It's not like you have to do the eyes first. It's just when I do normally I'm doing how to draw videos is when you get the eyes in, it gives you a really good focal point. So anyway, I'm just going to push that with my finger, smudge that a bit. And so now what we want is Jude Law's well, Dumbledore's eye. It's dark around the outside of his iris, over his pupil. It's really dark going down. Now, that goes into the corner where that's darker. We can fill in underneath there and the crease line of that comes just outside his eye filling that shadow in and the fold goes quite higher over the top and then you bring that down and then he's got some crease lines going out Slight little bit of shadow underneath. And now I'm just going to use a simple cross hatching again to build that shadow up underneath his eyebrow, the fold of the top of his eyelid, the shadow going right underneath the brim of his hat, and then the side of his eye. going out to where his beard is and you just build up the shadow in little sections so I'm filling up that's the bag underneath his eye 
darken that down a little bit again underneath his eyebrow at the top you can see there's a little bit of highlight showing underneath the brim of his eyebrow second bag so you got that first line coming all the way over and indicate that with a little bit of cross hatching going out to his cheek now here you've got he's got this little mole so I'm just a little circle putting the shadow in and we can pick that up and the second one kind of indicated there and then just filling that in and you can see straight away Dumbledore's form really coming together I'm going to darken that nose down all the way down to his nostril and then underneath we can darken that down it's got a little bit of a highlight but we can pull that out with the putty rubber again you've got a little bit of a fold and you can push this around with your finger and then just pull it off pull off the little highlights you want underneath his cheek and the top of his cheek with a putty rubber in a moment and so now we want this eyebrow in and you've got this shape coming up here right above the top of his eye from his nose and this is the kind of in between the bridge of your nose that goes straight up that shadow does to his eyebrow and then you can darken that down and you can see how the forms really starting to show as you add more and more shadow now again this eye we want the top fold of his eyelid and then where his eyelids just above his eyeball that comes down and round you can fill that in and we can there now what we need to do is really pull that out pulled the highlight off a little bit and then you've got that fold of skin underneath his eye that comes down and joins his nose and again underneath there's a shadow underneath and we've got the same with this eye and again the longer you spend the more detail you can actually put together in your drawing so what we need is a darker shadow on where his nostril comes up and then his cheek line I need to smooth some of that out now I'm going to get the smudging tool and I'm going to really push that around that pencil that I've just put on increase the shadow underneath that nostril again down the side his nose that kind of comes right the way out pushing that underneath his eye and you work it the same as you do the cross hatching with a pencil and if you've got lots of time you can really work it and do very very smooth shading so there you can see his face is really coming together now now I need to increase the shadow there push that over his nostril and we can build up the shade and the shadow using the smudging tool as a drawing tool completely underneath his lip 
again you've got the shadow underneath here on this side I'm pushing that down but there you can see how you've now got a full three-dimensional form to Dumbledore's head it's really really coming together so again you want you've got a straight line coming down which is caused by his nose and what we have I've got to fill that tone in on the side of his cheek again if you squint your eyes you can see the tone so you've got his moustache coming down the side and then the fold underneath his bottom lip oh that's better now I'm gonna come in with my putty rubber and I'm really gonna pull out that highlight in between the bridge of his nose over the top of his right eyebrow he's got on the folds there the bags under his eyes and then right underneath on the top of his cheek right on the edge of his nose going up so there you can see straight away how much life that's actually pulled into the picture and it does seem that right at the last minute everything kind of comes together now underneath his nose and on the side I'm now just pulling in some little highlights just dabbing the eraser and that gives me a little bit more tonal quality again underneath his eye brow so you just pull a bit off and then smudge it with your finger and you get a little bit more and you've got a little bit of a highlight down there and you can see how that pulls around and then you push it in with your finger and you get more tonal quality again you've got a bit, little bit of a highlight over his cheek line where his mouth is and then over the top of his moustache under his cheek line then his bottom lip has got the better highlight again his beard just pinch your putty rubber into a sharp point and just pull up the highlights and again you're just indicating this is a quick sketch you've got to go really slow if you want very very full details highlight on that one so now back in with the 2B pencil and darkening that eye in right into that corner little bit of tonal quality now here we've got where his eye comes down his eye top of his eye lid you've got a darker point going up and again I'm gonna increase the shadow under his nostril and right under his nose at the bottom okay, I'm going back to the 4B pencil and I'm increasing the shadow right into the corner of his mouth and the whiskers on his moustache over the top and then right down over the top of his collar you got underneath there we go and 
and we want the side coming down and just darkening little parts down while I've just got a little bit of time again his eyebrow just indicating more dark right underneath his nose again this is where you've got that shadow coming across and we want dark underneath his chin going right to the edge again just flex some little lines out to the edge off the side to indicate the bits of his beard So now, what I'm going to do is really darken the shadow down using the side of the pencil. Because we need this much fuller tone. Under the brim of his hat. Again, that's coming all the way. front of his hat and that frames his head and really pulls him together and these are just little things that you can do and the more you practice the more experience now he's got to have a darker shadow coming off from underneath the hat so I'm just again you've got the shadow coming right to the edge of his forehead underneath and I'm just smoothing the edge again even there that comes down and his eyebrow goes right up now again his hat on the top just pulling the tones together to create the shapes and you create an illusion with the pencil of what you want somebody to see but it all starts with those simple box shapes remember how to draw anything part one the links in the cards and the descriptions will teach you all of that I know this has been a little bit over an hour, but I'm just explaining to you everything that I've done and where a normal portrait can take a long, long, long time. So now I'm just really having fun, just filling in these shapes with a darker tone. Just to really build up. Dumbledore but that is again the same thing this collar coming down I'm increasing this shadow right the way up and it will give you a better frame for his face and you'll see when my hand moves away in a second you'll see what I mean and there you go and you see how that's totally framed up his face now and that looks really really lovely so again we've got these highlights that I've pulled out and I'm now just using the smudging tool to push that pencil around just darken those highlighted tones down see that needs to go down a bit on his ear and I'm literally just smudging it over that needs to be darker right underneath at that bottom part going up to the side of his beard again just because I've smudged that part there I'm now going to indicate some new 
lines on his beard. I can pull that up. And that curve, you can see, comes down of his hair going over the top of his ear. And now I need to just increase that dark in his ear again. And it really is, this is where now with drawing, you can just keep going as long as you want. But there comes a point where you have to stop and say, yep, that's it. So again, I'm going to indicate a couple of moles. This mole's got a really pulled highlight. So there that is on his cheek. And you can just keep on adding to the detail more and more and more and more and then you come to a point where you say right that's it I've done so here we've got a need to just darken that down because it's got this little triangle highlight going up to his head again the smudging tool can really help just pushing that tone and around for his head. But that is pretty good. Just some final little beardy flex down here. And I think we can call that as a pretty finished drawing. I'm sorry that took a little bit longer than I intended, but I hope you've enjoyed this. Because that's how you can use the techniques that I use in my how to draw videos to do real proper portraits. And this is in total real time. And you've seen me put this together from start to a pretty completed picture. And you do just keep working and building up your tones. So it's like there, just down that nose. You can just pull that over a little bit so that the highlight's stronger there on the top. And again, here on this eye, just pulling the highlights up that little bit. There's too much of a highlight there on his moustache. But then I can just pick out those little highlighty bits just to make his beard look a bit better. But now I'm actually very happy with that. So there we have Jude Law as Dumbledore. Now, I really hope you've enjoyed watching that. That's how to do a complete full portrait of Dumbledore. And it is just really good fun being able to do these and encourage you. But as I say, I hope that that's been a good encouragement to you to show you that the techniques that I use can be used to do a full portrait and develop your skills to do portraits. So you can use your own photos. But anyway, thanks very much. Please do like and subscribe for more how to draw videos. There's lots of the uh, Incredibles and there's at least a how to draw video every single week. Anyway, I've really enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. And there'll be a time lapse, a short time lapse of this that you can watch and see the whole drawing in a couple of minutes and that'll be online after this. So do check out that in the portraits, time lapses. Take care, ta -da.